This video is about C5, potential dividers, and it follows very naturally from the previous video, C4, about Kirchhoff's laws. A potential divider is an arrangement of resistors where we can tap off some of the potential parallel to one of those components. If I give you an example, imagine this is 1.5 volts and we choose our resistances for these two components such that the voltage across the first resistor is 0.5 volts. Then we know that the voltage across the second resistor is 1.0 volts because of Kirchhoff's second law. So how do we to choose two resistors that divide the potential how we want to? We use the definition of resistance, voltage divided by current. For each of these components, the resistance is as I've written here. So the resistance of the top resistor would be the potential difference across the top resistor divided by the current through the top resistor. And the resistance of the second resistor would be the potential difference across the second resistor divided by the current through the second resistor. But because these two components are in series, Kirchhoff's first law tells us that the current through them both must be the same. We can just call that current I for simplicity. Now, if we take those first two equations and we arrange them so that I is the subject, as I is the same for both of them, we can write that V1 over R1 is equal to V2 over R2. And another thing we can write is that V1 over V2 is equal to R1 over R2. This is just gathering potential differences to one side and resistances to the other. In other words, the ratio of resistances is equal to the ratio of potential differences. If we want the bottom resistor to have twice the potential difference across it than the top resistor, then it must have twice the resistance. It can also be shown that the voltage share compared to the total voltage across both resistors of a particular resistor is equal to the resistance share of that particular resistor compared to both resistors. You'll commonly find potential di dividers in sensing circuits like the one I've drawn here. In the circuit I've drawn here I have a variable resistor on the top and an LDR on the bottom. The resistance of the LDR goes down as the light intensity goes up and the resistance of the LDR goes up as the light intensity goes down. So as we are in a room that is getting darker, that means because the resistance of the LDR is increasing, so is the potential difference across that LDR. And so the potential difference across the variable resistor will drop as our room gets darker, because the potential difference across the LDR increases, because its resistance increases. And to tune what this ratio is, often sensing circuits will have a variable resistor, so you can select what those voltages are when you start. A similar circuit is a circuit with a thermistor. And with a thermistor, as the temperature of the component decreases, its resistance increases. As the temperature of the component increases, its resistance decreases. But the rest of this is the same. So as its share of resistance changes, so does its share of the potential difference. If you're studying electronics as part of your A-level in physics, then uh, you may learn that there's another component that can follow from here, a transistor, which can then be used to amplify this small change in voltage. But most A-levels don't include the electronics component, so I won't talk about transistors here.